In this video, you learn how to create tables with AI based on current data. I show you how you can use ChatGPT inside of Google Sheets and directly interact with the data there. In particular, I'll also demonstrate how you can create bulk text such as individualized email messages directly inside of Google Sheets. Before we look at AI and tables in more detail, let me introduce myself. My name is Gregor and on this channel I show consultants, managers and professionals how to make the best use of AI tools. Now let's get back to the topic. ChatGPT is great at answering individual prompts, but it has no access to current data and cannot directly interact with spreadsheets. The solution here is to use other AI tools. To create tables or spreadsheets with current data, just use Google Bard. And to interact on a spreadsheet with GPT, just use a plugin like GPT for Sheets. Let me show you exactly how you can do this. The example I'm going to use is Aramis. Arandis is a company that automates the creation of product descriptions for online shops. Let's say Arandis wants to enter a new market, namely the UK. What we are going to do now is we go to Google Bard and just write a prompt, which is give me a table of the 10 largest online stores in the UK, each with a short description, industries, and the CEO. Let's uh, send this and see what we get. As you see, Bart gives us the answer directly in a table, but ChatGPT can also do this. What is quite nice about Bart is that if we scroll down here, is that we have this export to sheets button. If we tap or click on this one, you'll see it creates a spreadsheet and we can directly open it. What you see here is just exactly the same information you bought inside of BART before, but now it's in a Google Sheets. The first thing you need here is an extension, which is called GPT for Sheets and Docs. If you need to get this extension, just go to the add-ons menu here and go to get add-ons and search for this add-on. Then you'll easily find it. Once you have this installed and set up, you can use a prompt that's called GPT and various others, but let's start with the most simple one. And here we can just write a prompt as if we were inside of ChatGPT. For example, write a sales email to and now we can add just this row here as an input so it will consider everything close it and let it process and a short moment later we have the gpt generated answer right here as you see it's personalized with the name it includes Amazon as well. This is already great, but it's also still kind of imprecise. Next, let me show you how you can get much more control over your prompt and engineer an output exactly how you like it. To specify the prompt, let's enter more information. And let's here again assume the case of Aramis. I'm first going to create some more space on the left and I'm going to delete this rank information because that is not relevant. And I will make a space for the prompt. You might do that on a new sheet if you work with more extensive data, but as a sample here and to keep it clear, let's just have it on one sheet. And uh, here for a prompt, we can imagine different criteria such as uh, specifying the task, Write a short email, a role, style, 
and uh, many more. Let me quickly speed this up and get back to you once I filled it out. All right. Now we have written down all these information for the prompt, but how do we actually now create some output that considers all of this? For this, we'll again use the GPT formula and the prompt is actually all this stuff here. That is fairly straightforward. But now, and also we need to fix this because when we copy over this uh, prompt to use it for all the other rows, we don't want this box to shift. We wanna, want it to be fixed. Now we need to consider values and here, in order to do this, we actually need a bit of a more complicated uh, input because we now need to consider both the titles as well as the row. And we have two different fields. So what we do here is we use another uh, formula which is called GPT create prompt. And this allows us to insert several arguments. So for the first one, let's just select the title here. And again, we want this to be fixed so it doesn't move when we copy this down. And as a second argument, we can now select the first row here. That will give us all the input. And we close this bracket and let it run. Again, a few seconds later, you'll receive a longer message. You see it doesn't have all these brackets. The beginning and the end is specified and I specified that I would like to have a 10 minutes call. So a lot of things in this message are exactly how I want it, but still it's an individualized message. Now to get a bit more space, let me make this smaller. Now what we can do here is just copy this down and we'll receive individualized messages for all of these people here. So as you see, there are individual messages now for all of them. And this is now already a great starting point to reach out to them. Now, this is the male body. What we can also create is a subject. And uh, to do that, we can actually just apply another GPT formula. Um, write a subject line for, and then enter this whole male body here as an input and close. And of course, again, we can apply it to all the 10. And after a short time, we'll receive input. Here I'll show you something else. If you think that these kind of subject lines or also the male body are not creative enough, you can add another input here for the temperature. You might have heard about the temperature in other applications for ChatGPT. Basically a higher temperature will give the chatbot more creativity and the lower temperature will make sure that it sticks a, as close as possible uh, to the input and doesn't get wild. And by default for this plugin, it is set to zero. So here as another argument, we can add a higher creativity, let's say 0 0.8. And then we apply this increased <clears throat> creativity everywhere. And what we'll see is that you have much more diversity in the taglines. So that's just one thing that you can also play around with. All right, so that was how you can create new sheets based on current information with Google Bard and then interact with them inside of Google Sheets with the extension GPT for Sheets and Docs. 
Now let's look at some more use cases. Besides writing text, you can also use the regular GPT prompt to analyze. You can also do much more such as write lists or fill in gaps or normalize data, like clean up emails that are sometimes written in a messy format. But for all of this, you'll need other formulas than just the GPT formula. If you are interested in that, please let me know in the comments and I'll create more videos about that topic as well. So what's the price for all of this? Well, BART, Google Sheets, and also the extension we used are all completely free. The only price you need to consider is the small fee that you pay for using GPT. I show you here the cost for GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 Turbo, the two most commonly used models. You'll see that 1K tokens, that's around 750 words, cost really almost nothing with the 3.5 version and they cost 3 to 6 cents for the GPT-4 version. What I've been using and what is quite good for most people is 3.5. If you want to have really good and high-end results for commercial grade content, you might consider going to GPT-4. And if you use it really a lot, you'll probably pay a few dollars, but the price is really negligible for what you get here. And that was an overview how you can use generative AI with spreadsheets today. What applications do you see for this? Did you already use it? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. If you have any questions, I'd love to get in touch. Just book a 15 minutes call with the Calendly link below in the video description. And with that, all the best for all your AI applications in spreadsheets.